Hello world, how's it going? Michael EJ here coming back with another finance economic video. This time around, I will be applying my present value of growth opportunities, growth pro thought process to, uh, to Warren Buffett. Might be the greatest investor of all time, but I have a shocking revelation while evaluating his portfolio as well as his recent struggles in the stock market. In my opinion, Warren Buffett is not a true value investor. Stick with me. It's, it's, it's a little shocking, but stay with me. Let me explain why. So while looking up some a little bit more about Warren Buffett and some of his recent changes in his style, I came across a paper called Buffett's Alpha. Um, it's from three authors who are all at AQR Capital Management. By the way, my favorite investor of all time, Cliff Asnes, he was part of that starting up process and he's one of the lead people there. And I love the research they come up with. Really wish people would pay more attention to it. Anyway, hey, there was a paper called Buffett's Alpha, and they essentially evaluated and analyzed Buffett's portfolio from 1976 all the way to 2011. And they made a few observations as to why Warren Buffett had abnormal returns. He was out, he was outsmarting the, the stock market, essentially. And the outperformance came from low beta stocks. Remember, the market beta or average volatility or risk for the market is one. So if you go below one, you essentially have less risk, a lower expected return, but as we've seen, that doesn't always, that's not always the case. So low beta stocks, cheap stocks, so there goes the value component, buying stocks that are cheaper and higher quality stocks. Stocks that are more profitable, little to no debt, are very efficient with assets, high returns on investment. To take it a step further, Buffett's performance is further magnified by his use of leverage. Remember, uh, Berkshire Hathaway kind of operates. I mean, they have a, little, a few holdings that are insurance company. I mean, Geico, for example, and that extra money that's that's essentially waiting. You have to do something with the with the cash uh, for insurance. You just can't take in all those premiums and just let it sit there. And he, he kind of used it to further leverage his positions and looks like probably the ones he had the most confidence about. And something else, Buffett's outperformance has dwindled over time as Buffett has apparently changed his style. So why is Buffett struggling now? If you look at his has returned over the past five years, and actually if you look at value versus growth over the same time period, what you notice is value is losing, growth is winning. And Buffett's portfolio is kind of showing the same light. Now, there might be other reasons, two that I've thought of, and one that was actually pointed out in Buffett's Alpha is less quality and low beta stocks and more traditional value stocks. So Buffett is focusing more on pure value stock picking and not paying as much attention to the risks that's involved, at least market risk. And he's paying more attention to private companies, more private deals. We've seen that he's getting, got a little bit more interested or a little bit more involved in the private equity space. Um, I think that's partly because of the preferred dividends he received, but yeah. That's kind of thing that's been going on. Now, just take a step back from my previous video, uh, my first explanation for the PVGO thought process. You need to remember why a firm will have a low valuation in the first place. There's two reasons. Either the company is extremely risky, as in this distressed, near bankruptcy, highly levered, or the company has low, very low growth expectations. Usually it's a more mature company, profitable, maybe even more efficient. 
but you don't see the growth. It's not a clear sight for the growth. And when I say growth, I mean revenue growth. That's usually what um, investors talk about when focusing on growth, um, growth investing. So is Buffett going back to his ways of deep value investing? I thought he went away from that. Well, well, after evaluating more than 90% of his portfolio as of September 30th, 2016, using the PVGO thought process, of course, and using it for earnings per share, I found a couple of things to explain the underperformance. First off, Buffett's portfolio now has a beta that's approximately the same as the market. Looking at both the average and median numbers, they show that Buffett's portfolio has approximately the same volatility and risk as the market itself. Now to take it a step further, I accounted for other key factors for defensive investing, which is low asset growth, high profitability, and some dividends, and found that these factors decreased the discount of his portfolio, the discount rate for, of his portfolio by approximately 50 to 70 basis points, or five to 8%, which is marginal. This leads to a slightly below average risk than the market. So in terms of discount rates, market average discount rate, if you're using CAPM, using Aswat, the motor and numbers, it's around 8%. From a market risk premium, you got 6% equity risk premium plus a 2% risk-free rate. There you go, 8%. The and we use that as a discount rate for the market. Buffett's portfolio discount rate, if you take all his holdings into consideration, and some of the adjustments I've made, it's closer to 7.5%. So slightly less than the market. It's very comparable. But that's kind of the problem. If you just take the beta from Buffett's alpha, the, the, um, the research um, that was done over his past holdings, and you replace that beta from one, you replace it with 0.8. Realize, realize that's about 20 to 25% reduction in risk and volatility brings the discount rate just on that adjustment alone from 7.5% to 6%. Well, that's just to put that all into consideration. At 6%, if I do all the calculations all over again, the growth expectations for all of his holdings is zero zero as in there's no expectations whatsoever whereas now growth expectations over the immediate future maybe the next three to five years is closer to six to seven percent which is still less than the market which is good that's the whole purpose of defensive investing take lower risk and that's the whole purpose of expectations investing don't don't move the market have have lower expectations it's all about lower expectations but it's one thing to have zero expectations and slightly grow versus have little expectations and have to grow as fast as the market. All of Buffett's holdings from Wells Fargo, Coca-Cola, IBM, the Vita, Goldman Sachs, Walmart, these are all companies that you would expect to grow slower than the overall market. And the way his portfolio is set up, they, they will probably meet those expectations of growing slower than the market, but not exceed. They won't exceed those expectations. They're not going to grow faster than the market. Versus what he did in the past, and probably not knowing so, he was, his portfolio was set up to there was no expectations built in. So a little bit of growth would have took all the performance there. It's all, all all abnormal returns from there. So that I think that's the explanation to why Warren Buffett is struggling at the moment. In conclusion, in his heyday, Warren Buffett wasn't a value investor. He was primarily a defensive investor with value as his secondary factor. And when I say defensive, I mean low beta investing essentially picking companies with less risk, higher quality investing, and in my opinion, low expectations investing. Buffett's current focus on private companies and public companies with higher growth expectations is eating to his portfolio returns 
more specifically his abnormal portfolio returns. In order for Buffett to return to elite status, the, the Oracle Omaha, as we all call him, I believe he needs to focus more on defensive investing. Go back to having a defensive, low expectation mindset like he subconsciously had in the past. Thank you so much for your time. Please comment on the video. Let me know if you agree with my stance or disagree or would like further explanation. And overall, let's, let's see what Buffett does in the future. Thank you for your time. Until the next time. And subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to do so.